previously on Shukaboa 100% Vanilla Baby. So what would have been one very long episode, or one very fast episode, will now be broken up into two or three parts. The first thing we'll do here is completely erase everything so that we have a clean slate to work with. I caramba is almost certainly going through the mind of the driver. They're not at the right angles, and it takes some effort to get the ramps to look smooth. If we follow the existing rail line, we see that it has some pretty extreme changes of grade. I've really been wanting to use the CCP one-way purple rail bridges, so why not do it here? Oh, here's a little rock that I missed before. And another- wait a second. It's a bison! I know with Move It, I could easily adjust the node height and segment length. There is no need to remind me. This city is, and will always be, 100% vanilla. And I stand by the assertion that developing my skills without mods has made me much better at working with them whenever I do. Thank you, gracias, obrigado, and merci, everyone. We're gonna jump right into the video cut from where we left off with two projects. First, two simple forestry areas that prove less is more, and second, throwing a grid into an organic build to prove to the haters that grids can be beautiful. Naming and workshop file will happen at the finale of this long episode, don't worry. Let's do a bit of terrain work to this hill we had made for the train tunnel so we can start plopping some forestry buildings. I'll place a biomass pellet plant here and a sawdust storage building next to it. That will be the centerpiece of this industrial area. We have to get our road up here, so let's do that with this artifact road that remains from the five star oil industry episode that I made on July 22nd, 2021. Over a year ago since we've worked in this section of the map, ay caramba. Now we can slope up from this spot to our new industrial area. I'd like to mix and match industrial and gravel roads to match the texture of the assets here. I think this makes it look way more realistic. In my opinion, it's really important for this area to have layers of terrain as well as somewhat randomly angled roads. These assets are just too large and they'll seem very squared off if we don't do that. We'll place a warehouse here and inside it paper will be stored. Since the biomass pellet plant makes paper, in the game at least, this will facilitate short trips for the processed product. Another larger wood chip storage asset will look good across from the pellet plant, giving it the look that this is a whole facility here. I'm just doing some quick fine tuning to the terrain edges to make sure nothing looks too square or unnatural. Okay, this is a good start for that area. Now let's move over here. I'd like to add more raw material production, so that way we don't need to ship our wood all the way from Shukinia Beach in the first tile. I know I did a whole thing about detailing this section of forest in the last video, but now I've got to get rid of it all so I can start fresh. Oh my caramba, another bison. I swear, this map is infested with bisons. This seems like a pretty dangerous area for it, so close to the highway. I think we'll have to take this bison over to one of the bison sanctuaries we already have in the city and keep developing this corner. So what I'm going to do here is extend the abandoned tracks out just a little bit further. Just like that. Then I'll place a forestry maintenance building up along the tracks like I had done near the Valley Lad Triple Trumpet Interchange.
I think that this asset looks really cool when it's up against railroad tracks like this. Let's put two lanes in this small segment so vehicles can pass the turning trucks. We'll reconnect the road. And now I have to replant a ton of trees here in order to have the tree plantations actually work. Forestry is the only special industry you can create anywhere by planting trees. You know what? Let's put in a large one here, because it comes with that shed in the middle. And across from it, let's put some log storage. On this side of this new area, I want to put sapling fields. Saplings are actually much more efficient in terms of production and jobs than tree plantations, for whatever reason. But they also look really cool. I like them a lot. We'll straighten out the road here so they fit nicely and we'll put one of each size here. These assets are terrain conforming, so we'll flatten the area under the shed so it doesn't look too weird. The saplings look like tiny sugar maple trees, so next to them I want to make a fake field of sugar maples so it seems like we've got different stages of growth going on. I'll do my best here to get it in a straight line. Uh, that could be better. Here we go. Splendid. I'll add a few more trees around the plantations to blend it more with the surrounding forest area. Being this close to a tile corner, we have to make sure not to make it that apparent that we're at the edge of the buildable map. By blending trees just right, we should be able to make it seem like it's a plantation that's intentional without it necessarily lining up with the edge of the map. Now this is a really underutilized terrain technique that I've seen a lot of people have never even heard of. When you have forests full of trees, just raise and lower the terrain underneath the trees to add variety of heights to the canopy. It's a small trick, but it makes a huge difference in how the forest looks. Take a look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. So we've added a lot of forestry, but there's no way for firefighters to arrive here without driving a huge loop around the map to get back to this off-ramp. I think we should add a small fire station here, and a fire watchtower. Of course, I've long ago turned off fire spreading, but it's still a good thing to have in case there is a fire at one of these buildings. Yuck. Look at that lumpiness in the parking lot. Now I could move the fire station, delete the road, smooth the terrain, and replace everything, but I think I'll just cover it up with some trees and bushes instead. 
Okay, let's move on to a new project in this unfinished area near 500 subscriber square district. We'll add a new district here and give it the tourism commercial specialization. I know I often talk about organic road layout as a key part of the Meow method of detailing, but that doesn't mean a grid can't be part of the organic layout. And here I'll start with a random angle and begin to create a grid pattern off that. I don't want to make too many intersections, so we'll just add two from the x-axis and two from the y-axis to this outer curved road. There are already several terrain differences here from previous works. I'm pretty happy with the grading on the streets, so now I just want to smooth out the terrain in the blocks so that the growable buildings will look good. Instead of finishing the grid pattern with streets, we'll use park paths to create alleys. They might look a little sloppy at first, but they clean up nice, and this will prevent us from having too many intersections that will cause traffic. In this open space, I want to add a large asset, and so I think we'll go with the sneaker factory. It's big, but it's not tall, and that should look good from the Grottles Expressway. Uh-oh, the corner drops down here by the road, and that I can't cover up with bushes, so we'll adjust the placement of the factory to fix that. Much better. The main entrance doors are on the side here, so we can add a path uh, to make that make some sense won't actually do anything, but at least it looks right. I left this large block open here because this will be where our new high school campus for this neighborhood will be. There are basketball and volleyball courts here as well for the students to do some athletic recreation. This basketball court is a bit too close, so we'll move it over. That little bit of slope is something that we can work with when detailing. We have three libraries in the city so far, but none are over in this area, so let's add one more. Do we like this block? Nah, let's do this one here. There we go. I think a tropical garden will be a great addition to this neighborhood and will fit in this triangular block. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I had done a tropical garden in a triangle block over in Roman Square and I liked how it turned out, so let's do it again. I'm thinking about maybe putting a unique building here, but first I'll upgrade the roads to have a bus lane. And then I'll add a few more alleyways. Before I forget, let's put a police station and a firehouse down. Can't forget to add water pipes under the streets. That would be pretty important. Okay, so back here, I was looking at this posh mall asset, and I think its round architecture will look great near the folded diamond interchange we made in the Bison Time episode. This is the kind of asset you don't want to hide among square buildings, so having it here by the overpass bridge is going to look really nice. And let's add a dog park for good measure. Okay, enough of the plopping, you get the idea. I might add some more stuff, but let's get set up for a fade into the future where we can see how I've zoned this area. All right, here we are, the future. I've got the game on pause still for a really important thing that I wanna show you, 
but first let's take a look around the new neighborhood. Here is the school area in that one really big block. I've added a community school as well, but you see by doing some simple detailing in the center area, I've transformed this irregularly shaped block into an educational facility. There are serious limits to the variety of detailing you can do in vanilla using props, but that brings me to my next point. You can see that I've added a lot of residential and office zoning in these blocks, along with some commercial. Sure, in some irregular spots, I added some prop detailing, but these details are nothing if the building selection isn't done thoughtfully. I spend hours waiting for the right buildings to grow that create a scene that I am happy with. In my opinion, buildings are detailing. All the props in the world won't make a skyline. It takes careful consideration of which assets look good next to each other. Something I always try to do is make sure that the buildings are never blocked out. This takes a lot of patience in dense areas, but no building should ever be hidden. Each angle should produce a skyline worthy of a screenshot. Whether you're doing a really curvy street layout, a rectilinear grid, or a hybrid like this one, I think that you will always be very happy with your skyline if you take the time to get the right buildings. No matter how close or how far I am from this neighborhood, the skyline is always visually distinct and each building in it makes a mark. Whether they're clustered closely or spread out a bit, the tall buildings should complement each other rather than compete. This is a city planning factor in a lot of real life locations, although luckily here we are not constrained by municipal zoning politics. We just get to put down what we like and enjoy the view. Let me zoom out for a moment to show you that while I was detailing, I created a new district along the outside of the grid. I did this so that it was possible to get the Edison Hypercharger parking lots with the organic and local produce specialization. I don't often put a lot of parking lots in, but here next to this mall, I thought that it made sense. I made six lots and carefully placed date palm trees around them so that the cars have some shade while they're parked. This is a tropical map after all, and shade is definitely something to keep in mind. On the other side of the mall, I used some commercial growables to create an electric car dealership and electric charging lot. I thought it looked good next to the mall. A little bit of high-end retail for the consumer. Back in the grid area, the tourism specialization grew a few interesting assets, like these clubs, this hotel. The Grant Canyon Casino, which is this building right here. And the Jubilee Tower this other high-rise. There aren't a lot of different tourism assets to use, so I limited the amount of commercial that I placed in this district so it wasn't so repetitive. Anyway, this is our grid, built inside of a randomly curvy road in terrain that has ever so slight hilliness. I think it looks beautiful, and I hope you do too, but please leave me a comment telling me what you think, I'd really appreciate the feedback. Now let's head back over to the forestry areas that we made before. Here in the tree plantation, I did a little more experimentation with tapering the main field with its surroundings. Take a look here with the tile border turned off, I think, 
even though it kind of has that straight line, it looks like a deliberate field. And because of the curviness of the rail on both sides of it and the highway there, you can't tell that it's the edge of the map. Aside from adding a couple of very small growables here, it is just mostly detailed with some trees and vegetation. Nothing too complicated here, just a good old fashioned tree plantation. Over on this side of the river valley, I added some generic industrial growables that I thought complemented the area well. Some containers up by the warehouse, a little office, some small garages, these tanks right here, all of this just sitting on this little mound next to the sawdust storage. And over here I added these four chemical tanks. Uh, I also put in this larger industrial building that has these kind of like loading ports underneath. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I think it might as well fit in with the biomass pellet plant. Why not? So a few trees and vegetation pieces around to blend the biome with its surroundings and voila! Both of these areas used only a handful of assets that complete the idea that they are specific purpose facilities. While I can appreciate the efficiency of a huge single industry area with all of the same buildings over and over, I think very few places actually look like that in the world. For me, I'd rather create a few smaller facilities that make a really nice scene. Less is more when it comes to making good looking industry areas, I think. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Let's look at the entire city right now. Take a look at this place. It's hard to believe that this all started 16 months ago on 31 March 2021. And that is exactly why I've left the game on pause. I'd almost missed it, but I paused the game just in time. The calendar date in the game is 31 March 2521, which means, if you're not good at math, that exactly 500 years have passed in the game since this city was founded. It's a very special quincentennial milestone that deserves a very special quincentennial project, but you'll have to see that in the next episode. The final part of the long episode is coming up next.